Hi, this is your math teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about piecewise defined functions. This is a piecewise defined function. All right, what, what that means is that the domain is cut into multiple parts, and you graph something different in each part. So what this strange looking thing really means is that when x is equal to or less than 0, that is when, when you're on the y-axis right there or to the left, that's, uh, this is where x e equals 0, which is why I made the, uh, the y-axis blue because it's going with this part of the domain. When x is equal to or less than 0, or to the left of 0, and including 0, then you're going to graph the line y equals 4. And for the part of the domain that's between 0 and 2, you're going to graph y equals 4 minus x squared, which, if you remember from intermediate algebra, is an inverted um, parabola. All right, and so that part is kind of orangey right in here. 0 to 2, x equals 0 to x equals 2. And then for x greater than 2, which is this part of the x-axis and everything that goes with it, uh, you're going to graph the line 2x minus 6. Okay, so let's take a look at what that would look like. Okay, I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to graph y equals 4. Graph. I need to make that bigger, don't I? So I'm going to view and detach the LCD. There we go. This is y equals 4 the horizontal line going through y equals 4. Now, uh, this is only going to be true from the y-axis over to the left. So let's go to the window and adjust this. For instance, x max is going to be 0, so down and 0. Now, what that does is that says that the, uh, uh, that x, as far as we can see on the graphing calculator, is going to go from negative 10 over here to 0 here. And now we're going to take a look at that graph again, y equals 4, but now we're just going to go on the blue part. There, that's what it looks like. And so when I actually graph this on paper, I'll come up 1, 2, 3, 4, and graph a line from here going to the left forever. Okay, now let us go back to the normal settings, which is, is, Oh, Z6, standard. All right, zoom 6. So I hit zoom, and now I hit 6. And there's y equals 4, but it's about to disappear. OK, so I'm going to get rid of that now. And I'm going to graph 4 minus x squared. 4 minus x square. And now I'm going to graph that. Okay, that's the graph of 4 minus x square. But I need the part of it, only the part of it between 0 and 2. So let's go back here. We'll make x min, that is the x on the left, we'll make it 0. And we'll make x max 2, so that I'll see the part of the graph between 0 and 2. Now let's graph. OK, 
okay it sort of goes down like that looks weird doesn't it let's go back to zoom standard zoom 6 and we'll graph it again this time oh well just imagine it's this part right here from x equals 0 to x equals 2 and this looks a little more normal it's this part from 0 x equals 0 rather not y equals x equals 0 to x equals 2 is this part right here okay now from on the green part of the domain all right from x greater than 2 or x to the right of 2 we're going to graph the line 2x minus 6 so let's clear and now we're going to say 2 x minus 6 graph okay now there is the line but the thing is is that we're only interested in the part of the line that goes from x equals 2 to the right so let's adjust our window and I'm going to make my x min 2 and x max is going to do the equivalent of going to the right forever. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to graph this on paper, complete with the open and closed holes that you need to get used to making when you make a piecewise defined function. I'll talk to you in a minute. Hi there, this is your math prof again and we're back and I'm going to graph this baby for us. All right, what's the first part here? We're going to graph y equals 4 for all x that's less than or equal to 0. All right, so I'm going to graph y equals 4. No, I'm not, because I have to do it here, not on my keyboard. There we go. And I'm going to graph it. Well, come on. Zoom 6 will always put your calculator back where you want it. There we go. See how it's a straight line through y equals 4. So I'm going to graph that. Here's the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, and so this goes to the left forever, like that. Now, I'm going to graph, I, I'm going to say, no, I don't have to say zoom 6, do I? All right, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to clear that out, and I'm going to put in 4 minus x squared, and I'm going to graph the part of that between x equals 0 and x equals 2. Okay, now notice that for x less than or equal to 0, I would put a solid circle in there. All right, because, because x actually can equal 0. Now, for this, x can't equal 0 but putting an open circle around a closed circle is just a little silly. Okay. On the other hand, if x is 2, then 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Notice that x can actually equal 2. So when we bring our parabola down here, I'm going to actually make a closed circle right there. Now, let's graph 2x minus 6. I'm going to clear that and say 2x minus 6 and graph that. And I'm going to graph the part that starts.
starts at 2, although x cannot equal 2, if x did equal 2, then we would have 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So if I, at x equals 2, if I come down here to negative 2, I'll put an open circle because x cannot actually equal uh, uh, x cannot actually equal 2, therefore y cannot actually equal negative 2, but it can get really, really close, and that's what an open circle means. So now, all I have to do is find one more point. What if y is 0? If I let y equal 0 here, then I'll have 0 equals 2x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides, you'll get 2x. 6 equals 2x, divide by 2, divide by 2, you'll get x equals 3. So here at 1, 2, 3, we're going to cross the y-axis, and now I don't have a ruler with me, so I'm just going to have to do the best I can. There. That's the best I can do. Okay, we have just graphed a piecewise function. Notice that, that these two parts of the graph touch each other. They're continuous. On the other hand, you do have a gap here. But x is still filled in at x equals 2. It's filled in by this part of the domain right here. x actually does equal 2 right there. So it ends up that the only gap in this is, uh, is well, it's not even in the y's, is it? Look at that. Because these y's are all filled in. Your only gap is going to be right there at y equals negative 2, which it can't. It can't actually equal negative 2. So let's talk about domain and range while we're here. It ends up that the domain is going to be the entire x-axis. There are no gaps because even though this is a gap, this is filled in. This is an open circle. This is filled in. So x doesn't have a gap at all. The domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity. What about the range? Well, the range starts here at y equals negative 2. However, y doesn't actually equal negative 2 there because x doesn't actually equal 2. So our range, whoa, I'm way too, ah, all right, all right, don't panic. There we go. All right, I hate it when I do that. I just forget. Our range is going to start at y equals negative 2, but not equal y equals negative 2, and go forever up. So that's our domain and our range. And we've just graphed a piecewise function that has some closed circles, some open circles. And you can see now why we don't uh, graph intervals with open circles, because we reserve our open and closed circles for piecewise defined functions. Okay, talk to you later. I hope this helped.